uh, today's program is going to be a, it's not going to be a long one. It's going to be a short one, but uh, last year we did a, a program on, strictly on poinsettias. A Christmas cactus, uh, it's an unusual plant. Uh, it's got its name because it, was, it normally blooms at, and, at Christmas, and they're different colors. They're pinks, they're reds, they're whites, uh, and whatever. Have, uh, <clears throat> they have a red and a white at home. Only problem is this year it didn't bloom at Christmas. It bloomed on Halloween. <laughs> so it was kind of spooky. I don't know what its problem was this year. It didn't read the calendar or something. I don't know what it was. But anyway, it's, a, it's an interesting plant. And it is a, um, a cactus. It's, it's a succulent. Uh, if you haven't grown one, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting plant. And it does generally bloom around Christmas time. But <laughs> this year mine didn't look at the calendar. You got, uh, uh, I have seen a picture of one that was over 100 years old. And so it's, uh, you know, it's an interesting plant. It's a colorful plant. It's, it's blooming at a period of time when you normally don't see that many plants blooming. So it's, it's interesting. And it, it's inside. You can take it outside in the summertime, put it in a, an area that is uh, not heavily sunny. It'll take some sun, but not a lot of sun. So be kind of careful about where you, what you might do with it. But anyway, next one, poinsettia. We talked... Uh, said a while ago that we talked about poinsettias last year at the, the Christmas meeting. Uh, it's an interesting plant. Uh, it's native to the um, Mid-America, uh, Mexico area. Uh, and it was <laughs> brought to this country by a fellow by the name of Dr. Poinsett. And he was the first ambassador to Mexico from the United States. While he was down there, he got interested in this plant and uh, sent some of them back, and from there the, it's kind of grown. You, you look at it and you say, oh, that's a you know, really pretty flower, but what you see there, all of that red is not a flower. It's, they are leaves that are up at the top of that plant, and if you can see, I don't have a pointer, but I can walk up here right quick. The actual flower are these little yellow spots. That's all, that's all the flower, and these are, are leaves around that, that plant, uh, the, around the flower. So it's, uh, it's an interesting <laughs> situation then that, oh, it's a pretty flower? It's not a flower. You can see them, but it's not really a flower. Um, <clears throat> probably some of you may know, actually, that is a tree. They will grow to 15 to 18 feet tall. And the, uh, uh, most of the ones that we see are just in a pot. Of course, they, they are young plants, only usually about a year, year and a half old. But it's, um, I have seen pictures of them that are uh, that high. Most of them will be, oh, eight to 10 feet tall. Uh, but the university, uh, Middle Tennessee State University, has got one in a greenhouse there that's 25 years old. And it's close, probably ceiling height. And the base of it is, well, 12, 14 inches in diameter. So it's, it's, it's an unusual plant in, in a lot of ways. So uh, it's, we talked about it last year. I won't get too detailed into it this year, so we'll go to the next frame. And the, those big are, the one like the still Yes, yes, it does. Yes. Um, Dr. Uh, Warren Anderson, who was in the ag department out there, uh, he retired about uh, six, eight months ago after about 37 or 38 years. But anyway, he uh, took some of us, some of the master gardeners uh, out to the greenhouse been four or five years ago. I, I'm assuming it's still there. At that time, it was, it was still there. And uh, he was saying, you know what that is over there? And I kind of looked at it and I said, no. He says, that's a poinsettia. And I said, really? And that's when I really found out that they did become a tree. And of course, that was, that was a big one, that, that, you know, bigger one than I had ever seen before. But uh, it's an interesting plant. Rosemary is a, a, a lesser known type of plant to, for the holidays. Uh, the first ones I really noticed uh, being a holiday plant was a few years ago, they were growing poinsettias and selling them as miniature Christmas trees in a pot, you know, kind of shaping them like a little 
Christmas tree. And of course it is an herb and it's used in, in cooking and uh, uh, seasoning and whatever. So it's, it's uh, something that you don't really normally see, but you do see quite a few of them around at this time of the year. Uh, and of course, the, what you see written up there, the, it was uh, part of the uh, nativity program back centuries ago, back in probably the uh, 1,200 year, uh, AD, and it, because the baby Jesus' clothes were dried on it, and it left a nice fragrant odor. So uh, it's, it's a common plant at this time of the year, uh, in addition to being an herb, which you probably see in, in other times, particularly in the spring when you... It, it, it's an outdoor plant. Uh, it will grow in a container, but you have to be real careful. It, I just killed one, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, have to make sure that it gets enough water, but not too much water. But anyway, it's uh, whatever. Calancho is another succulent. It does bloom, bloom, and uh, has small flowers, but it's kind of a, it's a fragrant flower. Uh, it's uh, another succulent like I could say it. and it will grow outside in the shade in the summertime uh, south of here where it doesn't get quite as cold it can be left out all, all, all season long all year long um, it's uh, uh, temperatures I believe it tem temperatures it uh, prefers is somewhere around 40 to 45 degrees but if it gets down much lower than that, then it starts to stress out and, and will die. But uh, uh, Florida and southern, southern Alabama, it'll grow, it'll live all uh, uh, 12 months out of the year. Mistletoe, <laughs> this is an interesting plant. Of course, it's a, it is a parasite, believe it or not. It's, uh, it's one of those things, those little white berries, birds will carry them around and deposit them on uh, different species of trees. And from there, it's kind of a waxy thing, a gluey, and those berries will stick to the bark, and they will sprout, and the roots will grow down and grow into the bark of the tree that it's attached to or deposited on. And from there, it will grow and uh, form a, a little small cluster of, of mistletoe. Matter of fact, a few days ago, we happened to pass by a tree, and I said, look, mistletoe up in the tree. And it was a little small cluster about the size of a basketball. It, they don't get very big, it's, uh, but it does, for the holiday season, it goes back to medieval England when uh, you ladies, uh, you're supposed to let every, any, if you're standing on it, you're supposed to let anybody kiss you. And uh, it's an insult if they don't. <laughs> so uh, be careful of walking out. I don't know if they've got any mistletoe here or not, so be careful when you walk out. But it's an interesting plant. Cyclamen. Uh, it's, it's another interesting plant. It's, it's also, I believe, one that is, uh, has an interesting uh, uh, fragrance. Uh, of course, it has multiple colors. Uh, it's, it's a plant that enjoys cool, but not cold. So if you have it in the house, it's, uh, if you can put it in a room or part of the house where it's a little bit cooler, it grows better and blooms better. And uh, so it's, a, it's an interesting plant. Holly is a Native American tree, and believe it or not, they're male and female trees. And the pollen from the male is, if they don't have, the female tree doesn't have a, a male tree close to it, it doesn't create the berries. So you have to be real careful about uh, if you would like to have a holly tree growing in your yard, if you want to have the berries, you're going to have to find a male holly tree to go with it in order for it to pollinate and form, form the berries. It's, uh, like I say, it's up there. It's from roughly New England all the way down into to Texas. And uh, it's uh, cold hardy. It grows well. It grows to be a, a rather large tree. I remember as a kid, there was some, some neighbor of ours had a holly tree, and my mother would go over there occasionally on in Christmas and cut some small twigs that she would use to decorate the house at, at Christmas time. So it's a, it's a beautiful tree. Uh, it's uh, evergreen and with the red berries and all the red and the green kind of what we look for for at Christmas time. So it's, it's an interesting tree. Uh, this is the, uh, it's really kind of hard to read and I just put it in here because it is some interesting information and I'll let you just take that home and, 
and get a magnifying glass and, and, <laughs> and read it because it is an interesting little, little uh, article there about the, the holly sprig. So go on to the next one, please. Uh, amaryllis, of course, uh, we're all familiar with amaryllis. It's, uh, it's a nice big plant that has beautiful red blossoms on it. Uh, it is basically a, a, it's a bulb that you can plant in the yard. But we'll, and we'll get into an, another little section a little bit later on about what you can, other things that you can do with some of these bulbs that we'll be talking about. But it's mainly, you'll see it around this part of the, t of the year because you'll find reds and found whites, which are, you know, common to the, uh, the Christmas season, the reds, the whites, and the greens, whatever. So uh, it's, it's an interesting plant. Spider lilies, of course, this is no other one of the, one of the lily family. Uh, but it's, uh, it, again, this is another one you'll see because of its, its red color. It's, it's a pretty, but it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit different than what you, it, much different the blossom is than the one you just saw. So, so yeah. in the fall, Yes, 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 sure do. Paper whites, <laughs> this is one of the daffodil proper, uh, family. And it's, it's basically one of the plants that you can get Christmas time that has the whites. You can put the whites and the reds. And we'll talk a little bit about the daffodils and some bulbs here a little, in a few minutes. But uh, it, it's, uh, this is here mainly just to illustrate a white blooming plant that you can have at Christmas time if you are interested in having this plant. And we'll talk about that again a little, a little bit later. Uh, Glorious Snow, <clears throat> I have never seen this plant. Uh, it's a, a small, small flower, uh, rather unusual, it, and it does grow in uh, uh, either white or pink, I believe in blue, of course, the blue there. Uh, it's, like I say, I really don't know that much, but it was a, a plant uh, that I found in the Christmas area that uh, uh, might be of interest, and you may want to do a little bit more uh, research on it more than I have on, on, on this. So. Uh, it's just a, another Christmas plant that you find around. Crocus. Crocus you usually find uh, in January, February, and it's a, it's a bulb that you plant in the yard, and it comes in and <clears throat> uh, blooms usually when there are no flowers because in, you don't find a lot of things that bloom in January or February. So uh, it, I've even seen it coming up through snow. So it's, it's one of the uh, uh, things that you plant early and it blooms real early in the year so if you plant it now will it bloom uh no this is a little bit uh it, it may bloom next year it wouldn't be blooming uh planting it now it wouldn't be blooming uh in january or february it'd have to be uh, something else it's a little this is a, another one of the lilies <coughs> uh i'm not really familiar that much with the, uh, the kefir lily uh, it's a member of the uh, amaryllis family that says there, it's, but it, it is a, a plant that you can find that is blooming now and that you can take home and uh, you can force it. Like again, we'll, we'll get into forcing bloom, uh, pl uh, plants in a little bit later. Narcissus, you don't think of buttercups or narcissus at Christmas time, but uh, this is where you can get a red and a, and a white color. It's, a, it's an interesting blossom because uh, it, it is so stark, you know, so red in the middle and so white on the outside. It's, it's something that could be interesting for, it gets the white and the, and the red for Christmas, so it's, a, it's an interesting plant. This is a red pink, as it states down there at the bottom. <clears throat> it's a large, it, it's, it has a rather large blossom. Tulips, you don't think of tulips, and again, this is another plant we'll get into in, in, on down the line just a little bit. And a lot of people think it, belong, it started in Central Europe. Most people uh, think of tulips as having been in, in Holland. From, uh, but basically, uh, it's an old plant. Basically, as it says here, the Persian Empire, one of the first ones to uh, use the, the, the tulip. And they were hmm, not close to the area where we normally associate tulips coming from, uh, Turkey and, and those uh, it's a few hundred miles away. Uh, another red tulip, but uh, you can take the red and the white again for Christmas time, but it's a, 
uh, we'll get into, I think, this at the next frame here. You can force bulbs. You can take the, the crocus, the uh, tulips, uh, the daffodils, and you can force these bulbs starting back uh, in uh, September or October, and they will bloom then, depending upon how long it takes them to mature and get to the blooming stage, anywhere from, you know, uh, Thanksgiving on into to, uh, February or March. And <clears throat> it says here that you can, uh, how you can do it, you can start uh, containers with a little bit of uh, glass marbles or, or uh, little fine river uh, gravel, snug the roots in the gravel, only the, the roots should uh, touch into the, the water because you don't want to really cover the bulb because that will call, cause the bulb to, root, to rot. So you want only the root part of that bulb to be, act, have access to water. And the roots will bring the water up into the bulb and, and have it to grow in the, the, the green part of the foliage and, and the, eventually the, uh, the flower that that bulb does. Don't overfill it, put it in a sunny window, not hot, but a, one that you can, uh, where it will get some sunlight and it will, after a few weeks, it will, you start to see some green and eventually it will put up a, uh, a shoot that where, the bulb, where the flower comes from and it, will, and it will bloom. Don't throw it away after it blooms. Just cut it back and you can set it in the, the uh, yard, your yard, then uh, in the spring and it, it won't do anything. Uh, until next spring and it will then come up and uh, go through the process of growing and, process and, and uh, bringing up a flower. So don't throw that bulb away. Uh, go out and plant it in the yard next spring and it will be fine. Uh, in soil you can, you can also plant these things in, in just in a flower pot with, so, with uh, uh, potting soil. And what you can do is to plant uh, if you have a tall, kind of a tall pot, you can uh, plant a few bulbs down deep and then some a little bit more shallow and a little, some a little bit more uh, shallow than that. And they will come up and they will bloom in stages. The, the deepest, the most shallow ones will bloom first and they will die back. The second one will come up and bloom. They will die back and then your third level and depending upon how, <laughs> how many layers you've got there, You'll have different stages of blooms and they'll last probably two to three weeks between blooming. So you can have a, a pot like that and you can have blooms for, you know, six or eight weeks uh, if, you, if you would like to have, do it that, that way. Uh, make sure you just uh, keep things moist. You don't want to drown, drown them by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, it's, a, it's an interesting process of being able to, to force those bulbs and, and still be able to use them at a later time. Force the potted blooms to bloom again next spring. You know, uh, basically I've already talked about this. And a lot of these bulbs require a chill period. Uh, daffodils particularly, I think, call for at least a 90-day chill period. If you get them <clears throat> when, uh, when it's warm, you're going to have to put them in a the refrigerator for about... Um, three months, 10 to 12 weeks. And that, puts, that makes them think that they have gone through the winter. Then you can take them out and put them in, in a, your container for forcing them to come in at a later time. So they have to think that they've gone through a 12 month period and you can do that by, by actually forcing them and putting the bulbs in, in the refrigerator to make them think it's winter time and it's cold. So when it gets warm and you take them out and it gets warm, then they think spring has come and they will go through their, their flowering process. <clears throat> uh, key to success, forcing bulbs, keep them in a cool spot, out of the sun, too much warmth, especially first, limp leaves, shrivel buds, etc. And I told you it was going to be short this year, so it, it is a little short. Merry Christmas to all of you. Have a good year. Mm -hmm.